Creatinine is a lie. In fact, it might even be racist and sexist too. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the pitfalls of creatinine so you don't make any inaccurate assumptions about your patients in the future. Problem number one, GFR is a lie. So we all know creatinine is used to determine a patient's kidney function and it's produced by muscle and then is cleared by the kidney. But in terms of actually figuring out the patient's kidney function, it's important that we use the GFR instead. In the hospital, we report the creatinine all the time, but I do think there is a trend towards reporting the GFR. You know, like for uh, renal dosing for DOAX, for example, uh, used to use the creatinine. And I think even dosing for metformin used to use creatinine and now is switched to GFR instead. So I'm curious to hear what your thoughts would be on reporting GFR instead of creatinine. But even GFR has its downfalls. And the biggest reason for that is because it's an estimate of what the patient's GFR is. Let's say you have a kidney and you have the renal artery going to it and the renal vein leaving it. And all of a sudden you fully clamp down on the patient's renal artery. So there's zero blood flow going to the kidney. And for example, uh, day one, their creatinine is 0.8. And then day two, their creatinine goes to two. So what is the eGFR, the estimated GFR for the kidney going to report in your EMR? It's going to say the patient's GFR is like 35 or 45 because their creatinine is two. But in reality, the patient is getting zero perfusion to that kidney. So in actuality, the patient's GFR is zero. This is really important because if you're doing renal dosing for your medications, you're gonna be relying on an inaccurate GFR based off this estimation, whereas the true kidney function is much lower than expected. And vice versa, if somebody's creatinine is four and it starts improving down to three, they may have completely resolved that issue and they may have 100% return of their kidney function, but it's gonna take some time for that creatinine to clear. And so let's say that clamp on that renal artery was completely taken off right away. Immediately, they're getting a bunch of perfusion there, but each day you're only seeing a part of that improvement. And so your estimated GFR is actually lower than the patient's true GFR. By the way, I only just realized this when I was researching for this video, but we used to use the cockcroft galt equation to uh, lead to an estimated GFR. And that was actually created by an asthma specialist which is really interesting. But that equation has been kind of cast aside because it led to an overestimation of GFR. And now we're using other equations like the CKD EPI uh, equation instead. Problem number two with creatinine, and this again goes back to GFR, is that GFR is, or at least it used to be, racist. I'm not going to belabor this point too much because recently it's become less racist, but uh, we used to use the eGFR and there was, if you remember in the EMR, there was a separate calculation for African-American GFR versus a white person's GFR. And this was due to thoughts that African-Americans may have more muscle mass and so their GFR is a little higher. And actually sometimes when I'm in the EMR, I feel like I still see this. So you know, in, in some senses, it is still very pervasive. But in 2021, the National Kidney Foundation and the American Society of Nephrology decided to create a race-free equation for estimating GFR. And so this should be going uh, away in the near future. Point number three is that creatinine is sexist. And there's basically one main situation that I'm talking about here where this actually has a pretty big impact on patients' outcomes and management. So liver transplant candidates, when they're awaiting transplant, are placed on a registry list based on their MELD NA score. And one of the factors of the equation is creatinine. Now, this actually is pretty detrimental to any females who are uh, awaiting liver transplants because females compared to males tend to have less uh, muscle mass and that artificially decreases their uh, creatinine compared to a male. So you can see that MELD NA appears to disadvantage women awaiting liver transplant by underestimating their mortality rate. And so there's definitely some thoughts on how they can fix this issue, but I am hoping that in the future, we start to rely on more objective measurements like the GFR instead of the creatinine. The next problem with creatinine is what I'd like to call big bodies and small bodies. And this was actually requested on my YouTube uh, in the comments section several times, but uh, Thomas Schock asked for a video on accurately testing the eGFR of an athlete or an active person. And it kind of goes in two directions. So you've got two extremes. You've got the very extremely active, muscular, hypertrophied person. And then you've got the very thin, frail, potentially even cachectic patient. And in both of these patients, the creatinine level is going to be skewed because the muscle mass is affecting how much creatinine is going around in their system. So in this case, there's a relatively newer test that's gaining a lot of popularity, and it's called the cystatin C test. And you should definitely know about this because I think in the near future, it may eventually even replace creatinine because it does not rely on the patient's muscle mass in order to estimate a GFR. And so in any situation where a 
athlete comes in and their creatinine is 1.5 and you're like, oh, do they have CKD or something? But really it's just their muscle mass. The cystatin C may give you a much better estimate of their GFR. And the same thing as well for a thin, frail patient, you may see that their creatinine went from 0.4 to 0.7 and you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. But for them, it's actually a huge deal because they have so little uh, muscle mass to begin with. I just want to give you some extra tips about creatinine. One of the most common questions is, is a jump from one to two uh, as big of a jump as from five to six, for example? And the answer is that a jump from one to two is orders of magnitude higher than a jump from three to four or five to six. And I'll put a graph up here just to show you how big of a difference there is in GFR from a creatinine of one to two compared to three or four, for example. What is the expected bump in creatinine after starting an ACE inhibitor or an SGLT2 inhibitor? It should be around 20 to 30%. If it's going above 30%, you get a little concerned. But both of these medications are going to cause an expected bump in the creatinine, mainly because with ACE inhibitors, you are dilating the efferent arterial. And so less creatinine is going to be cleared in the patient's body, but you're actually reducing the hyperfiltration injury by uh, not forcing so much high pressure into the kidney. And the same thing with uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. Basically, it causes increased solute at the macula densa, and then that causes vasoconstriction of the afferent arterial, and that also reduces clearance of creatinine. And finally, should you hold metformin for imaging studies with contrast? This was something that was very commonly done in the past and is still very commonly done now. And the reason is because metformin, we usually uh, say, is contraindicated with GFR less than 30, and we're also worried about the risk of lactic acidosis when there's poor kidney function. In truth, the evidence for lactic acidosis with metformin is pretty shaky at best. I mean, there, there is some case reports, but it's extremely, extremely rare. And also, uh, even contrast-associated AKI from contrast isn't a, you know, a very clear-cut uh, situation either. And so, in this case, the American College of Radiology, in their 2023 guidelines, actually recommend against holding uh, metformin before imaging studies with contrast. I hope this video was helpful and interesting to you in terms of knowing some of the pitfalls of using creatinine. Let me know down in the comments below if you think GFR should be what we're using from now on and if, we can, if you think it's possible to make that kind of culture change. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.